There are 8,000 students on campus. One third will go abroad before graduation. All return with fresh knowledge, new experience, and stories untold. We've captured a few to give you a glimpse. Akwaba, that's one way in Ghana to say welcome. And I, never in my life have I felt more welcome than when I spent nine weeks there this summer. I quickly learned that one of my favorite phrases was one that people use before they eat. One day I came home from work and my host brother was there with a big bowl of rice and stew and he looks at me and he says, Rebecca, you're, you're invited. And I said, to what? And he says, to my meal, of course. And then I started picking up that even when I was in a crowded bus and someone cracked open a bag of plantain chips, they would turn to me and say, you're invited. People use this all the time. And this sense of invitation and welcome was taken to a whole new level one Sunday at church. I was in the back of the room talking to some friends and a woman joined us. And as we were chatting, her small baby started to cry and he was hungry. So holding her baby in one hand and unbuttoning her blouse in the other, um, she turns to me with a twinkle in her eye and said, you're invited. When I was in Scotland, I was, you know, at the activities fair, at the university's activities fair, and um, I obviously checked out basketball, that's, that's my passion, and uh, I was just uh, looking for someone to talk to, get to know. You know, I just, I, t I take a leap of faith, I go up to this one kid, this redhead, and I went up to him, I'm like, you know, I'm an American. I love the movie Braveheart, and I'm sure you do too. I know that's a bit forward, but... What do you think? And he's like, oh, good shot. And I'm like, what? I know you're speaking English, but I have no idea what you're saying. You know, and that, that was the theme of like the first two weeks there. I just didn't understand anybody. It was good shout, which is like a phrase for, I really like what you're saying because I love the movie. There were many more bumps along the road of me relearning English in the Scottish form. The British are like coconuts have the hard outer shell and once you break through you find they have a, a warm milky center. Perhaps the most memorable coconut was a man, a professor of mine, who didn't use any technology. No cell phone, no internet, no computers. And the first time we went into, a German classmate and I went into his room, we sat on his couch and he in his old leather chair said, do you have any good reason why I shouldn't smoke? And my German classmate raised his hand and said, well, I have asthma, but that's it's not that big of a deal. He said, okay. So for the rest of the eight weeks, for the next eight weeks, rather, he told us stories, communicated history to us, brought the books from his walls alive behind this big cloud of cigarette smoke. He was the British Wizard of Oz, connecting us to his world of no technology, but a wealth of knowledge. Great travels and grand adventures are strung together in ordinary moments. Stories bridge the gap between continents and across oceans. Ask. Share.